weighing a bill that would make it illegal for a doctor to perform an abortion if the purpose is to avoid a baby with Down syndrome. The legislature is expected to approve the measure this fall. Well, now we'll get into the discussion here. We're joined in the studio by Dr. Udi Sommer, Associate Professor of Political Science at Tel Aviv University. Thank Good you very evening. much for joining us. And a Professor of Political Science, Dr. Connie Zubeda, thank you very much for being with us Thank as you, David, well. for having me. Uh, let's begin, Dr. Summer, I'll turn to you, talk about the Planned Parenthood situation here now and the, yeah. and the potential defunding of Planned Parenthood. Who benefits? Well, you know, this is a, a major cultural war that maps onto the entire political spectrum in the United States and has to do with the 2016 election, so lots of parties are, are uh, going to uh, uh, benefit from either the defunding uh, measure succeeding or uh, uh, or from its failure. It's going to be different parties, of course, uh, but it's important to remember that it's only 40 percent of the uh, activities of Planned Parenthood that is funded by federal uh, uh, funds, and beyond that, no abortions are, be are being funded with federal, uh, by, by law, they're not allowed to uh, use this, these federal funds to uh, to uh, uh, to uh, to do a, to make a, to have abortions, and, and and what they do use this money for is things like uh, uh, cancer screening, uh, uh, contraception. So in that sense, I think uh, who's going to lose, at least in the immediate sense, would be uh, women who benefit from those services. Now this drive has been building up for weeks here. This anti-planned parenthood drive. In your opinion, is this just politically driven now? Is this uh, an election campaign issue? Uh, it's definitely an election campaign issue that is being fought at three levels, okay? One level is what happens at the state legislatures. We see all sorts of measures coming from the states in recent years trying to limit abortion uh, accessibility. The second level is what happened with Republicans in Congress, right? We see it goes all the way to the top. Uh, yeah. uh, and the third level is the Republican candidates, right? You see several right. of them making uh, uh, statements concerning uh, uh, the defunding measures et cetera, et cetera, and, and, and related issues. Uh, Dr. Zabeda, do you see this as being the big campaign issue for conservatives now? Is this now the issue in the U.S. that will be the measure of how conservative you are? They would like it to be the measure of how conservative you are. They would like it to be the major issue of the campaign because whenever the campaign goes to pro-life or pro-choice or gender issues or uh, same-sex marriages, um, they win because conservatives come out to vote in higher numbers and then you kind of like control for the Hispanic community. The question is, within this issue is um, a candidate who would like to be a central candidate for the presidency, the Ohio government, the governor, and the question of going versus uh, Roe versus Wade. And, and that's the issue, whether we can think about abortions and how can we think about abortions. In, in that term, because they want to control for pregnancies that have some sort of um, um, autism, um, what they would like to do in, in certain measures is eventually control for the examinations which test for autism and then take them out of the basket altogether. If they will succeed in doing that, that means that you have no control of the fetus as well. And I think right now um, this is the first measure they would like to go, but they would like to take it further as we move into the campaign. Uh, among the conservative issues here now, same-sex marriage you mentioned is a big one that has recently seen the liberals make a big stride forward now with, with marriage being legal across the United States. Uh, is this perhaps the last great conservative issue here that's still not settled in the United States? Well, they can try and move to strike down the same-sex marriage as well. They can go against what happened in the United sure. States, and one state can somehow legislate something against same-sex marriages, and they would like it to be the issue. Uh, don't forget Bush Jr. twice won his candidacy by going into these issues during his campaign. Uh, let's talk about the state of Ohio now for a minute with this interesting measure that they have, talking about uh, making it illegal for an abortion if it's for because the child, the fetus, has Down syndrome. It seems bizarre to me that that alone, that abortions would be legal, yet going after a fetus with Down syndrome would not. How do you see that, or how do you make sense out of such a measure? Well, the statistics are that about nine out of ten fetuses with uh, who are identified with Down syndrome are being aborted. So, uh, uh, and you know, there are some organizations that uh, you know, uh, organizations that uh, that uh, support uh, parents with uh, kids with Down syndromes uh, have all sorts of statements related to that. But I think the focus on Ohio is very interesting here, and the reason why is that first of all, the idea of uh, uh, of allowing abortions based on or 
or, uh, uh, or, um, or making sure that abortions are illegal based on the motivation for the abortion is something unique. As you mentioned, if abortions right. are legal, what, what, what does the motivation has nothing to do with that. But be, beyond that, if you look at Ohio, Ohio is the battleground for the election. This is going to be the swing state that is probably going to determine whether a Republican is able to make it into the White House or, uh, or not. And an interesting figure here is Kasich, Governor Kasich, the governor of Ohio, who uh, has been one of the most anti-abortion governor, governors in the United States uh, uh, in recent years. Since 2011, since he assumed office, the number of uh, abortions clinic in, clinics in Ohio uh, was reduced from around 16 to under 10. Uh, and he is trying to establish himself as the uh, most pro-conservative or the most conservative uh, uh, member in the field, as, at least as far as, as uh, abortion issues are concerned. Uh, do you have a reaction? To well, that? no, I, I agree. But what he would like to do is he would like to establish himself as a candidate for presidency in the future. And what he's doing right now is he's telling the Republicans, you need my state, and this is how I'm going to do it. And in future, you're going to have to repay me. I think what's going on in Ohio is just a symbol, but they would like to see things going their way, the Republicans. Let's talk about the, this video that emerged as well, showing uh, Planned Parenthood, oh. uh, allegedly showing Planned Parenthood yeah. uh, officials discussing this really uh, a disgusting, a disgusting thing here, selling baby body parts and well. fetus parts like that. That has now become significant, whether it's true or not. This is what turns up in internet searches of Planned Parenthood. This has uh, been, become fuel for the fire of this protest movement. Well, cadavers and bodies are being donated to science. This has been going on for years and years. Genetic research, the way we are today, the evolve, evolvement and development of science is due to people who are gracious enough to give bodies to science to test and to see what's going on. This is part of it. Now, the fact is that during the campaign, everybody's going to push for it. You're selling baby fetuses and cadavers for um, um, organs and so on and so forth. Um, I, I don't think you can argue with that and say, well, the organs are not developed enough. What we're doing is we're doing chromosomal as, um, research and so on and so forth. But at the end point of it, we at the universities and all over the world, we need these bodies and cadavers to progress science, and that is it. I think it's the sentiment yeah. that you know, was expressed in the video, right. the fact that you know you didn't feel, uh, and you know that may be the way those kind of discussions uh, um, develop. But still, I think this is what made uh, this so made the public reaction so powerful. A question for both of you. How do you see the U.S. measuring up to the rest of the world in terms of abortion laws, in terms of the topic of abortion? Well, you know, there's huge variance if you look at it in a comparative perspective, right? Some countries such as Chile, for instance, would not allow abortion under any circumstances, circumstances inclu including a, a rape or incest, and other countries would have abortions uh, uh, that are uh, relatively, uh, uh, that are, you know, available to all, depending on certain uh, on center standards, center medical standards and others. Mm -hmm. uh, so in that sense, the United States, but we have to remember that in the United States, it's not, it's, it's a political issue, it's a political topic, but the final resolution is a constitutional one, right? The decision in 1973 is the decision, is a ruling of the Supreme Court, Roe v. Wade, that was later, uh, uh, there were later, uh, you know, there was a progeny of cases that relatively, that refined the, 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 the kind of doctrine that the Supreme Court created. But this is a constitutional decision. So at this point, the only way to overrule Roe v. Wade is either a decision by the Supreme Court, which doesn't seem to be in the, uh, any time in the near future, or an, a constitutional amendment, which is even, the likelihood of which is even lower. Yeah. I agree. There's even variation within the United States, you have to remember, between right. Northeast and West and, um, and, and the hardcore Republican down South. Um, in New York, it's not as problematic as it is in Ohio and other places. So, What about in Israel, uh, in comparing it to the situation in the well, U.S., how conservative um, it is? It depends on whether you're a Jew or not. It depends whether you are um, an Orthodox Jew or not. It depends whether you're poor or rich, because money has a lot to do with it, because you have to go through the medical committee in order to get... Well, it's not a black or white issue. No, 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 Israel. not in Israel, not yet. No. Uh, do, you, do you think that this should be uh, a black and white issue? Maybe not in Israel, but in the United States? Is this something that perhaps the Supreme Court needs to rule on? Mm -hmm. It's an interesting question, because I think it has to go back to core issues of the United States as a society, between religiosity and non-religiosity, between South and, and North, and so on and so forth. So I, I, I hope, well, in the future, we might see black and white, but good black and white. Right. Uh, but I'm not sure this would be the case, because we do not see any kind of like weakening of 
um, and uh, um, religious right in the United States. Uh, your, your closing thoughts, Dr. Sai? I think, you know, in the, in another interesting aspect in the United States is the disparity between the URA and the facto, okay? So the URA, the Supreme Court of the United States has jurisdiction over the entire country, which means that that abortions should be available, should be legal in the entire country. But the reality is the majority of uh, uh, women, the majority of women live in places where uh, you can't really have an abortion because there's no clinic available. So this kind of disparity uh, is something that organizations such as Planned Parenthood is trying to uh, uh, to shrink to make sure that what's uh, true the URA will also be true de, de facto, but this has proven to be quite a challenge. Well, Dr. Udi, Drs. Udi Summer and Connie Zubeda, thank you very much for thank being with us for here. Us. A very interesting debate. Appreciate your time. Well, five